Hey there, I'm Jim Edgar, and I wanted to talk to you today about audio compression in your voiceover studio. I'd published a few posts about compression over on my site, justaskjimvo.studio, and I wanted to have a resource available to demonstrate some of the key points about actually using those compressors in your voiceover recordings. Now, these resources are over at justaskjimbo.studio slash compression, and they go into a bit more detail and have some links to a few of my favorite compressors for voiceover. And I'll link to that in the notes below, and I'd encourage you to read through those as well as watch this video. So today I wanted to show a few different compressor plugins and how their user interfaces differ. I'll be showing you three different ones. The Apple AU Dynamics Processor, which comes with the Mac OS, the Kotelnikov compressor from the fine folks at Tokyo Dawn Records, and one of the Waves compressors, which uses a more skeuomorphic user interface. And by skeuomorphic, I mean one that looks like the actual hardware device that it's supposed to act like. I'll be demonstrating these compression tools in Twisted Wave, but you could use them in Adobe Audition, Pro Tools, Studio One, Reaper, any of the applications that support common plugin effects. Now first, let's get some audio recorded that has a decent amount of dynamics in the performance. Where do big ideas really come from? They don't come from here or here. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins, written on hands, and scribbled on napkins. The origins aren't pretty, the journey is unpredictable. But the results are beautiful, wild, epic, maybe even a little scary. All right, let's give a listen to that. Uh, first, let's clean that up in the ends there a little bit, get rid of the stuff here. Quick typing of the S key, and we'll just delete that stuff off the front. So we've got a little cleaner audio now as we play through this. Where do big ideas really come from? They don't come from here or here. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins, written on hands, and scribbled on napkins. The origins aren't pretty, the journey is unpredictable. But the results are beautiful, and wild, epic, maybe even a little scary. Now, as we can tell, this performance has a fairly wide dynamic range. Now, I get louder in a few places, I get quieter in a few places. Because I'm a voiceover professional, I can control my instrument that way. But there's a noticeable difference between the quieter bits and the places where my vowels tend to ring out, and that continues to kind of drive the louder parts of the dynamics. This is a perfect spot to use compression to even those out. So let's start thinking about some of the controls that we have in a compressor. Let's use the Dynamics Processor, and I'm just pulling that off my recent effects menu right there so it comes up nice and quickly. The nice thing about this particular tool is that our threshold is this dot in the center. And what we can see is this arrow, which is now red down at the bottom of the screen there, as it starts tracking the loudness of my recording, it's going to change color once it goes past to that threshold. So let's just see that work real quick here. And we'll go through kind of this section right here, which has a little bit of dynamics to it. We're not actually engaging the compressor or the dynamics processor at this point. We're just setting the threshold. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic to shit. And you see right there, where it goes past the threshold, it goes from blue to red and tells you that whatever settings you have in your compression are going to be applied once it gets past this threshold. So this is what I refer to as the thermostat, that when the temperature in your house reaches a certain point, the air conditioner or the heater comes on. In this case, with this tool, which is a dynamics tool, once we go past that, and again, it's going from quieter to louder as it moves from left to right here, it changes from blue to red once it's triggered. Now, what happens after that has to do with the ratio and some other things we'll talk about in a second, but this is where the threshold is getting met. So let's kind of put that down there and see again, when does Big it Big ideas aren't changed. in tidy little spaces. They come that's, that's triggering most of the time. Let's nudge that threshold up a bit. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. So when I get 
the loudest in there, that's triggering the threshold. So that might be an appropriate place for this particular use. Let's go ahead and open up the Kotelnikov, which is from Tokyo Dawn, and we'll just pull it off our recent effects right here. And in this case, as we play through that section, big ideas aren't born in tidy. We can see that it gives us a little bit of a meter. It shows us where that loudness is occurring. So we can then use this knob to find a sweet spot that it's not acting all the time, but maybe as it gets louder. And again, sort of that loud place in this recording is that place around eight seconds. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. Looking back they that come from chaotic, bit. disheveled, there we go. and splattered places. So it's clearly hitting the threshold when it gets to that louder po point. Over in the waves effect, it's going to have a threshold again, big honking old Bakelite type knob, because it is, as we like to say, skeuomorphic. Now this uses a needle. So this kind of, when we hit that threshold, you'll see it acting a little bit. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They if come I from put chaotic, that way up, disheveled, it's gonna act really quickly. Places. This one works the other direction, so as I go Big closer ideas to zero, born in tidy little spaces. it's not doing They come much. from chaotic, so disheveled, say, well, and splattered places. So with this, what we're seeing is something that really mimics hardware. Back in the day, as they say, there was a needle, and it was mechanical, and it tracked the amount of compression being applied. So as it starts to trigger, you'll start to see it Big ideas aren't born in Move. tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and so splattered places. So that's the places. point at which big we're ideas aren't nicking. born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. That's where we're activating it. Is where we've got that threshold in a in a place that it's reacting to those louder points. And in all three, all we're trying to do is set that first place that it's actually going to react to our audio. Now, sometimes I talk about cutting down the tall trees manually where we highlight something and attenuate it, which works on very short pieces of audio, but isn't particularly effective for longer chapters of an audiobook or a more dynamic performance that we want to control. And that's where we're using the compressors here. So let's go back to our first one. Now, as we go back to our Dynamics processor, we start talking about the idea of ratio. Now, of course, the first sample I use doesn't actually use ratio yet. They use this thing called headroom, but we can sort of see what we mean by a ratio. It's a logarithmic curve that once we've gone past the threshold point, it slowly makes things quieter, right? It does it in a gentle curve that if we think about this in terms of ratio, if two decibels come in and we're very gentle with it, maybe only one gets through. Up here, if two, if it followed that white line that goes from corner to corner, if two came in, two would go all the way to your ears. But in this case, we're gonna just reduce that once we go past that threshold. Now, a high ratio in terms of this type of interface would be squeezing this down. So this is almost an infinite ratio. So let's hear what that sounds like. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. At a certain point, it just doesn't get any louder. And we can make that sound a little weird by nudging the threshold down and keeping this very tight ratio, this very high ratio to it. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. Now, at that point, you could kind of hear that it's preventing it from getting normally loud. It's, it's impacted the dynamics of this recording so much that we kind of sense something is wrong. And that's a good no-go place with any of these compressors that if it's if you can hear the compressor working if you can hear it preventing things from getting uh, let's call it naturally loud then we've used too much compression now we know that a compressor will prevent audio from continuing to get loud so once we hit that threshold the ratio is what controls how loud the audio can get and to be clear, the compressor acts on the audio, which is louder than the threshold. So if something is below that threshold, it's not going to react to it. So for example, if we just take that section right here and use our Dynamics processor and nudge that threshold back up where we kind of liked it, what we may end up doing if we apply it here is just cutting down the tallest bits. It actually didn't change this stuff that falls below the threshold. It just took a little edge off of that. I'll undo that so you can see the change. If we do that again and start bringing that threshold down, 
Well, then it starts acting on everything, right? It squeezes the whole thing down, which is oftentimes the way people use compression, which is an easy way to overuse compression. I'm trying to do something surgical. I'm trying to handle these taller peaks. So I, I kind of want a higher threshold, but I want it to react fairly aggressively. So I might nudge that compression up a bit. I might increase that ratio of it. So once it gets to that point, it can attenuate those peaks without too much trouble. So I hit that and that's behaving pretty well. It hasn't really changed the overall dynamics. It's just gotten these tall ones down out of the rafters. Of course, we can do the same thing with a Kotelnikov that has a threshold that we set on the dial here. And then its ratio is a more traditional two to one in this case. We can dial that all the way up to only about six to one, which is nice. It's one of the reasons I like this particular compressor, uh, actually seven to one, excuse me, is that it really is hard to set it too aggressively, that it's technically more of a mastering compressor, which just uses a little light compression. And that serves us very well. It doesn't distort things and it can keep things in a very reasonable ratio. So if we use that threshold again, play through this. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. We They're... see how it's reacting to that. It's showing us gain reduction here on the right, which is a pretty useful little bit of feedback in the interface here. And again, if we bump that up, well, let's go ahead and apply that, see what that does to it. Well, that did a really nice job actually of handling those peaks without crushing down the quiet stuff as well. If we were to undo that, and let's say we use something that's perhaps uh, a little more aggressive. So let's use a super aggressive threshold and maybe a little bit more aggressive ratio here. So it's doing a lot of work once it hits that point. If we play through that, we'll hear that. Again, all this stuff we can monitor very easily in real time by using the play button. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. Now we sort of feel that kind of crush where the, a voice kind of gets pushed down which is a function of probably threshold and a little bit aggressive on the ratio. So we'll back that off to, again, I like a two to one. It's kind of where I'm gonna set a ratio on most compressors for, for voice. And then we'll play with that threshold a little bit. Let's have a super aggressive threshold, but a very light ratio. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. That's interesting. So it's starting to work a little quicker, but it's not sounding quite as you know, obvious that we're using something on it. So then again, we would dial and play back and forth between these two ideas. Let's put that threshold in a more reasonable place. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. That's almost They're not doing on margins written on us. hands and scribbled on napkins. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins. I like that. So again, we've been fairly aggressive, but what does that sound like in the context of the whole recording? They don't come from here or here. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. So we've taken a chunk that was really a little bit aggressive in terms of the performance dynamics, and we brought it under control. Now we haven't smushed it you know, down into nothingness. We can certainly do that if we want to later. But in this case, I think we've got it more under control. By now, some of these controls are starting to look a little familiar as we go between these things. We've got our threshold knob, we've got our ratio, which in this case, we've got somewhere set in the two-ish range. And as we play through Big this, ideas aren't let's born loop in tiny on little that. spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins, written on hands, and scribbled on napkins. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. We can they see come it's from chaotic. Working. We can see that the compressor is working because the, the needle starts going way negative. It starts at zero, which is no compression, and then it's showing us how much compression essentially it's adding, uh, which is what the Kotelnikov was showing us with that incrementing LED kind of bar that, uh, that lit up as it was acting. But in this case, we also want to trust our ears. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins, written on hands, and scribbled on napkins. 
Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered. Now, what we're noticing is this particular compressor is being a little more gentle. It actually works more like an analog type compressor. It's not quite as aggressive as some of the digital ones. I do find I use this for certain purposes, but really not all that much. I still prefer the Kotelnikov or the AU Dynamics processor generally. One thing that's important is to realize that compression does not make things louder. That compression is really only acting on the louder bits and in fact making them quieter. I've been showing that here in this video and I talked about it a lot on the resources I have at the justaskjimvo.studio uh, site. But the thing about compression that most people miss is that there's a step after the compression which is what makes things louder. And that brings us to makeup gain. If we go back to our audio here and we go to the dynamics processor and we set, let's, let's be a little aggressive with the threshold. So we just sort of see it acting. We're gonna bring it down so that it is triggered earlier by slightly quieter audio and go ahead and apply that. You can see it actually kind of made things quieter. I'm going to do that again for you. We'll bring up that same effect and we'll bring the threshold down a little bit so it's triggered earlier. So as we do that, everything's nice and quiet. Well, that did make it quieter. So let's go back to this. We'll just use analyze real quick and we'll say this whole thing was sitting there at about minus 23.38 luffs. And after we apply the compressor, if we do that same measurement, we found we've lost about 5 dB of gain. We went from 23.38 to 28.75. So let's focus on this idea of makeup gain. Let's go back to the AU Dynamics processor. And if we poke around the bottom of this, we see this little details triangle. If we click on that, we actually see a master gain adjustment. This is a post compression adjustment. And if we were to say add 5 dB of gain after we do the compression, if we apply that, it did squish down the tops, but it's not as quiet as what we were just looking at a second ago. In fact, it's about 23.75 luffs, which is almost exactly where it started out. If we undo that right here, this is the unprocessed version 23.38. And again, if I use that compressor, but this time make sure that I use makeup gain afterwards then when we apply it, it doesn't look the same, but it is effectively the same loudness. Where do big ideas really come from? They don't come from here or here. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins, written on hands, and scribbled on napkins. But the important thing to realize is that increase in volume did not come from the compression. It came from the makeup gain that was applied afterwards. Now, if we look at our other examples of compressors, we will see that they both have that idea of makeup gain. Over here on the right, we've got this makeup idea right here. So we can increase our gain after we've done the compression. I like this because it, it shows very clearly that it's going through our compressor and then we add this makeup gain. So again, same sort of thing. Whoop, I made that pretty loud because I hadn't really set the threshold correctly, but we don't lose any volume going into that. If we go to the Kotelnikov and bring that up, we will see that it too has a makeup gain over on the right here. One quick thing we can do just to make sure that we're using the right amount is go ahead and apply it, use Twisted Waves Analyze function, and we find that we've taken the LUFs from 23 to 27-ish, and that means that we would probably want to add about 4 dB of makeup gain. So we'd add some makeup gain here, eh, roughly four, apply that, and again, what we end up with is a result that's roughly where we started. We started at minus 23.38, we're at minus 23.4. That's pretty close. Let's hear how that sounds. Where do big ideas really come from? They don't come from here or here. Big ideas aren't born in tidy little spaces. They come from chaotic, disheveled, and splattered places. They're doodled on margins, written on hands, and scribbled on napkins. Now, in most cases, we're probably hearing a little bit of 
noise floor being brought up by that. But again, that's a function not of the compression, but of that makeup gain afterwards. We took everything and made it quieter, therefore the difference between the loudest bits and that noise floor are going to be closer. So when we boost everything up, that noise floor comes right along with it. One thing we want to be a little mindful of is that if you are using the Audacity compressor, that if we go into the effects in Audacity and go to compressor, which is their native compressor, it lays out with some of the same controls. We've got a threshold. We've got this thing called noise floor. We have a ratio, which is familiar to us. But one of the things that we have is this checkbox, which most people don't notice, that says makeup gain for zero dB after compressing. What that means is that if we set a nice aggressive threshold and we have a decent ratio and we use that without unchecking it, all of a sudden everything's essentially normalized back up to zero dB. So we can get into a lot of trouble with that. That's going to inadvertently and automatically set our makeup gain. When I use the compressor in Audacity, I'm gonna actually uncheck those options right here because I want to handle any kind of post compression gain step with a little more finesse and I'm going to probably do that with normalize or some sort of amplification step. That way I can normalize it where I want to. Uh, if I had a nice quick analyze tool I could know right away that its RMS level is at minus 23 dB. Okay, I hope that helps you better understand the key controls on compressors in your voiceover studio. And I just want to point out that as with any Dynamics processor, I always want you to be aware that you can do a lot of damage really quickly to your audio. That means if something sounds weird or it doesn't sound like it should, trust your impression that you may have just overcooked it a little bit. Now, if you want some direct help understanding how to use compression in your specific situation, you can reach out through my site, justaskjimvo.studio. We can connect one-on-one, -on -one, and I also regularly teach group classes which focus specifically on recording well in your home voiceover setup. So thank you for your attention. Now, go be brilliant.